All right. Hey, Nebraska. Jane Klebb, the chair of the Nebraska Democratic Party, uh, which is exciting to say, and I'm very excited to have that role. So we are here today to respond to Governor Ricketts' State of the State. And if you had been tuned in to NET, which is our local affiliate of NPR, they stream all of our legislative sessions and things like the State of the State Live, you would have heard Governor Ricketts describe how he views the State of the State, how, what his vision is for our state. And the summary of his State of the State is actually pretty simple be like Kansas. And everybody that has looked at Kansas and how the governor there has just completely stripped the government's budgets and continue to put middle class families at risk knows that that is not the path forward for our state. You can also look at three conservative websites to know the direction that Governor Ricketts is going to take with our state. And I wrote them down so you could see them. And it's going to be backwards, I know, but, you know, this is very grassroots as the Nebraska Democratic Party is, and so I'm going to walk you through this. He takes ideas from the IJ Institute, and if you go on that website, IJ.org, you will see what looks like, quote-unquote, freedom, democracy. In reality, it's essentially saying government has no place in our lives, and as Democrats, we deeply believe that good government actually produces good results. Governor Ricketts also takes his ideas from Americans for Prosperity, a right-wing organization funded not only by the Ricketts family, but also funded by the Koch brothers. And lastly, he gets his ideas from the Platt Institute, which again is a right-wing organization that is essentially a parking place for Republicans who want to run for higher office it was an organization founded and funded by Governor Ricketts, and he uses AFP and Platt Institute to hit on Democrats and progressives so he doesn't have to have his fingerprints on them. So if you want to know where Governor Ricketts gets his ideas, it's these three places. Governor Ricketts literally did not present any new or bold ideas. And in fact, he used the word bold to describe what he was going to lay out as his vision for our state. He started talking about health care. He started to say that HHS in our state, the Department of Health and Human Services, is doing a much better job now. Reality is they have paid $57 million in fines because they could not apply to certain basic guidelines. So we, as taxpayers, paid $57 million to the federal government because our state government could not run HHS properly. Anybody in Nebraska knows that was because of the way that they really messed up the foster care system, the mental health care system, and beyond. They also found $13 million of unpaid checks, of uncashed checks at the Department of H HHS. So for Governor Ricketts to turn around and say that HHS is somehow on better footing, that's not a description of better footing to me. $57 million in fines and $13 million of uncashed checks that does not equal a good government stance from my perspective. The other thing that Ricketts has done on health care that he completely left out of his speech is that he has left over $880 million of our taxpayer money on the table in order to expand Medicaid. That would make sure that 54,000 Nebraskans would have health care and would have affordable health care. Instead, our taxpayer money that we pay the federal government is going to other states like Alabama who have expanded Medicaid and are making sure that their folks are covered with health care. So that was the first thing. Ricketts described health care and HHS, and the reality is he didn't provide any new solutions to help expand health care, to help make health care affordable, and to make sure that HHS is actually functioning in a proper way. Second, the budget, which we know is going to absolutely consume the state legislature session this year. And so let's just talk about what Ricketts did with the budget. One, he absolutely uses fuzzy math. In a typical right-wing fashion, his only solution to our budget deficit, which we're facing a huge budget deficit, is to cut taxes. That is not a solution. That is not going to get us to a place that we need to. If we actually want to grow the state budget, we need to grow jobs. 
And one place that he could do that is clean energy. We all know that Nebraska is ready for clean energy. We have to take climate action, which the state legislature agreed on a report, even conservative Republicans like State Senator Larson. Yet Governor Ricketts did not mention clean energy jobs at all. The expansion of wind, the expansion of solar, making our country more energy independent, but yet Ricketts said nothing. The other way that we can grow our state budget is actually keeping families here. I can't tell you the number of young people that we have lost to Chicago, to Denver, to Washington, D.C. Not because we don't have a beautiful state. We do. We have a beautiful state with beautiful state parks, with amazing small towns, both in rural and urban communities. But a lot of people are leaving our state because they don't like the fact that we have one party conservative right wing control. We've got to do something about that. So we want to grow our budget. Let's start with keeping our young people here. Let's start with expanding clean energy. Third, when you do these state of the states, state of the states, you expect that you're actually going to hear these bright ideas, these bold ideas. And Governor Ricketts had none. He literally had no new ideas. So if I was giving the state of the state, here are some of the things that I would say. One, we've got to extend, extend public education to universal pre-K and to two years of community college. There is no reason why our public school system does not start with three and four year olds and does not extend until you're 21. That makes common sense. It would help us in the long term with finances and it would make sure that our kids and young people have a solid footing so they can earn good jobs and good wages all throughout their life. As a school board member, we saw up close and personal what pre-K means for kids. And in Hastings, we only had a little bit of money so we could only extend pre-K to a few, a handful of kids. And we saw the amazing growth that that did for those kids. A lot of the kids that were in a universal pre-K in Hastings were kids that had learning disabilities. It put them on a solid footing. Why we're not doing that statewide is literally beyond me. That's a bold idea. That's a new idea. Let's get to work on that. Second, why aren't we ending eminent domain for private gain? In our state, if you are a foreign corporation, whether you're from Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, or Canada, you can use eminent domain on landowners. So farmers and ranchers have no stability, no way of knowing if their land is gonna be next, if their land is gonna be at risk for putting a high capacity tar sands pipeline in the ground. That would not only risk our water supply, not only risk our climate, but would risk their property values. So that's something that Governor Ricketts should consider. He is a conservative, but he does not hold conservative values when it comes to property rights. And lastly, clean energy. Why Governor Ricketts isn't putting forward a clean energy agenda is beyond me. It is smart business, it's good for our climate, it's good for our water, and most of all, it's good for jobs. If you wanna talk about a hard hat revolution where you're having workers make sure that they're providing for their families but also providing for our state, let's put them to work developing clean energy. It not only is less intrusive on the land and water, it also provides good jobs, it provides an income stream for our state, and it shows that us in Nebraska are taking climate action, which is something we tremendously have to take responsibility for as a country. So that's my review of Governor Ricketts' State of the State. He offered no new ideas, he gave us a plan straight out of Kansas and right-wing groups, and now it's up to us, we the people, to make things different. And so on that note, I have a few things, a call to action, if you will. If you want to help build the party, we have a couple things coming up. One, on January 14th, we have our winter meeting. That's where the Democrats get together every few months and we talk about party politics. We talk about policies, resolutions. If you want to get involved in the party, come to our winter meeting. All of the information is on the Nebraska Democratic Party website, as well as our Facebook page. If you wanna learn more skills about being a good activist, about running for office, or about running one of our state or one of our county parties, come to our Blue Bench Project training. Our first one is on January 28th. We'll have them every couple of months, and they'll be in Omaha, Lincoln, and always in a rural community. We'll rotate the rural communities that these trainings are in. 
Our first one's January 28th. We're gonna be learning about phone banking. It's a really good way for you to be engaged and learn new skills. As Democrats, we can't only work on building the party and getting folks into the voting booth. We also have to be in the streets. If we're gonna have a viable party where we're gonna elect Democrats to statewide offices, we have to be in the streets with the grassroots working on the issues that folks care about. And so there's two places that you can do that just this month. First, there's healthcare rallies on January 15th. Senator Sanders, Schumer, Pelosi, and Warren have called for all Democrats, progressives, independents, conservatives, whatever stripe you hold, if you care about healthcare, get in the street with us on January 15th. There's information on our Facebook page. If you can't make it to a rally, stand on your porch, take a selfie, and post it on Facebook and Twitter. Then, I'm gonna be speaking at the Women's March on January 21st. There's a big march in Washington, D.C. to show the resistance to a Trump administration, and we here in Nebraska are standing up in the streets as well. So I will proudly be speaking to lots of women and men who come together in Omaha on January 21st, and we will also make sure that folks get trained in the afternoon, and then we'll be marching in solidarity to show that we, the people, are the ones that are gonna get things done. Thanks for watching. Make sure you come to a party meeting. I will see you in the streets.